Hi friends, hope you are doing well. Today we are going to start lecture two on our course. And today we are going to look at altitude. And this is a very important question because you all know that if you go from sea level to let's say the top of a mountain, you are going to see a change in temperature, pressure and density. And these parameters are going to affect the lift and drag or any of the forces which are going to be generated on the flight vehicle. So if you are flying in the atmosphere, the altitude is going to have a big impact. So let's begin this discussion. I am Dr. Ranjan Ganguly. Now, you see from this picture here that typically if we consider the Earth's surface, we are at sea level. Then we have the radius of the Earth and we also have this distance hg. We also can take a value right from the center of the earth to a point here, and we can call that h subscript a. So from this diagram, I can write the equation ha equals hg plus r. And here, hg is the geometric altitude, and ha is the absolute altitude. So these two are very important and they are pretty much clear from the diagram shown here. Now, the local gravity G at a given height H of A, say somewhere here, is given by this equation. G is G0, R by H A square. And so I can immediately write this as G0, R by R plus H G, whole thing square. Now, G0 is the sea level value of the gravity. And again, we already know, we know Hg. We most of the time deal with Hg when we talk about the altitude of a given body. But of course, remember that there is something known as Ha. And Ha is important because the gravity is essentially related to that. So that's something which is very important to know that if r was 0, for example, g would be 0, but since r is not 0, we are getting a value for gravity here. So with this knowledge now, we are going to proceed further and we are going to look at something known as the hydrostatic equation. So for the hydrostatic equation, we consider a body of fluid, a small piece of fluid, which is given by this cuboid type of system here. And this is at rest, and we are going to do a forced balance on this. So now this cuboid has dimensions 1, 1, and dHg. So the length and breadth are both unit values, and the height is dHg. And remember, Hg is the altitude here, and g, of course, refers to it being a geometric value. Now, if you look at the forces which are going to act on this cuboid, there is going to be a pressure here. There is going to be a slightly different pressure here. So using calculus, we assume this is dP plus P, so a slight different from this pressure. And there is going to be a force because of gravity, because this mass or this piece of fluid, it has some weight. So in this case, we use the fact that we calculate mass as density into volume. So I take the density and the volume of this cuboid is 1 into 1 into dHg and then I multiply that by g. That's the total force which is acting downwards. So now I do the force balance. I have two forces acting downward, one force acting up. So let's say I take the P plus dP force which is acting like this. I multiply it by the cross section of this at the top that is 1 into 1 subtract p 1 into 1, then add again p 1 1 dhg g equals 0. Then I do some cancellations here. The p term cancels out, and so what I get is dp equals negative rho g dhg. So this is the equation which is known as the hydrostatic equation, and you clearly see that this is linking the pressure to the density, to the gravity, and also the altitude, the geometric altitude in this case. And this also applies to any fluid because I have not made any assumption about the type of fluid we are dealing with. So now we already know that gravity at sea level is given by G is G0. Now 
we had the hydrostatic equation in this form dp is minus rho g dhg now i could also write an equation like this i could say that dp is minus rho g0 dh so what i have done here is i have replaced g by g0 and therefore the h value would also change it would become dh so we clearly see that g is going to be slightly different from g0 and therefore h will also be slightly different from hg if we are going to have both these to be exactly same and now this value h here which we have defined actually from this equation this is known as the geopotential altitude so this is a very important concept as far as aerospace is concerned and the atmosphere is concerned so let's define it formally it is actually the fictitious altitude which comes about because we have made the assumption g is g0 so this is something to keep in mind it is actually defined by us so now let's go back to our two good looking equations we had the first hydrostatic equation the second one we divide these two that gets rid of dp and then i can easily get dh is g by g0 into dhg so i get this equation here now this equation here of course is coming from the fact that already i have defined g in this form you go to the slide before you are going to get this so i take this value here of g and i substitute it here and so that expresses dh in terms of dhg and the only things linking it are r and hg so of course if you are at a given height from the earth you would know value of r you would know value of hg so you could use this equation of course what we need to do to use this equation is to integrate it and that's what we are going to do in this slide so essentially we know by convention that at sea level we will say both these heights are zero so essentially the geometric value is starting from zero and also we'll say the geo potential is starting from zero so i integrate both these from zero and so on the h side i go from zero to h on the hg side i go from zero to hg and then i do this integration here so again reverting to your calculus this is a pretty easy integral you can do it and so you get this simple equation h is r by r plus hg into hg h being the geopotential altitude and the geometric altitude is hg so essentially this equation lets you calculate any of these values given the other value you need to of course know the radius of the earth so let's look at a simple example here to solidify this concept so again this is an equation we need to always keep in our memory h is r by r plus hg into hg now you can immediately see the radius of the earth is actually very large and we will see the radius of the earth is not something which is same everywhere because the earth is not actually a perfect sphere so let's say we are at some latitude 45 degree there the value of r is given by this value here in meters 6.356766 into 10 to the power of 6 meters now of course typical values of ha will be very small at which the aircraft flies relative to the radius of the earth which is almost 6 6356 kilometers so what's going to happen is that r by r plus ha is almost going to be equal to 1 and so for many practical purposes h is going to be almost equal to h a but this is not going to be always true which we will see here in this example so let's say the radius is given by this value and let's say you are at some altitude of 100 kilometers and essentially at this particular value you want to find the geopotential altitude so what you do is you use this equation here we put in the radius of the earth we put in the value of hg which we have said is 100 kilometers and so we get 98.45 kilometers so it's slightly different but it is interesting to note the difference now of course if you go further high up you are going to see that the h and hg values are going to be progressively different 
Now, an interesting thing about the Earth is uh, the radius you have at the equator, it's slightly greater than the radius you have at the pole. So it's like a slightly flattened sphere. It's not like a perfect sphere. So many a time you will see different fruits having that kind of uh, body. So again, the Earth is somewhat like that. It is like a flattened spherical shape. So that's something to keep in mind. So to summarize today's lecture, we introduced three important concepts about the altitude. So until now, you were, of course, probably familiar with the geometric value, which is Hg, which is the distance from the sea level at which you are there. So whenever you are at some mountain or at some resort town high up somewhere in the Swiss Alps or some other place, you are going to be at this location Hg from the sea level. But also there is something known as the absolute value for altitude and that is including the radius of earth here. So that would be this value H subscript A. And then we also see that we had the geopotential altitude which is given by H which is again given by this equation. So these two equations are something you need to keep in your mind. H A is H G plus R and also H is R by R plus H G into H G. So keep these things in mind. Do not get confused between the geometric altitude and the geopotential one because geometric we use H G, geopotential is where we use H. So sometime it is a bit confusing, but after some time you will settle down into this pretty well. So that was my lecture for today and you now know some of the underpinnings behind the altitude you need to be at and this is important because many of the time when you place some satellite somewhere then the geopotential values and all will start getting used and so if you go further from the atmosphere the geopotential starts becoming more important and that is the reason why we develop this concept. So I'll end this lecture today. In the next lecture, I'm going to discuss the standard atmosphere because what has been done is that some of the facts about the atmosphere have been fixed by researchers from various experimental data they have obtained through the past many years and decades and so on. And so we now know the typical variation of temperature which takes place through the atmosphere. And that's something which is very important because what happens is that when you are specified a particular height, say an airplane is flying at one kilometer height, then you can calculate various things such as pressure, density, and temperature at that point, just from that information that it is flying at a certain height. So I'll end this video here and I will see you in a video sometime soon. Do remember to like this video and also to subscribe to my channel if you have not already done so.